Good afternoon, and thanks for the opportunity of chatting with you a little bit about the June 2021 editorial, which is called To Enhance Function, Promote Child Development. The themes that I present in that editorial will be familiar to many people, both because these ideas are increasingly popular and because they're things about which I have written and spoken repeatedly. What I think we have traditionally forgotten or have neglected in the field that we call developmental disability is the first word, the idea of development. And if we think about children with impairments, the children who come to our clinics and seek our advice, if we think about them as potentially deprived in one way or another by virtue of limitations in mobility or language or vision or hearing, then we reflect on how we might intervene rather more broadly than simply doing therapies. Let me be perfectly clear that therapies and therapists and professionals have a very important role in the lives of these kids and their families. But I think we have traditionally been somewhat too narrow in, in addressing or trying to address the impairments without thinking about the impact of the impairments on child function. The paper, the study to which I refer in the editorial from Palmer and his colleagues in 1988 was a well done randomized clinical trial, which had findings which we missed and misinterpreted, I think, because we were so focused on intervention that we missed seeing that the children in the control group, the control or the comparison group, which was in fact an early intervention program, those children with diaplegic cerebral palsy did better on mobility and on other aspects of development than children receiving neurodevelopmental therapy. This is not so much a criticism of neurodevelopmental therapy as it is a criticism of all of us failing to see what was under our noses. That was that when we promoted development, when we encouraged children to use whatever ability they had, even though they didn't do it nicely and normally, they were making developmental progress. I like to remind people when I lecture uh, to think about two-year-olds uh, in English, we refer to them as terrible twos, and they are, in quotes, terrible because they are teenagers in training. They are relentlessly curious, active, busy, and using all of their mobility and all of their motor capacity to explore, to learn, to improve, to practice relentlessly while improving their skills and their abilities. And I think it's essential that we take a a leaf out of typical development and be prepared to sacrifice, and I say that in quotations, sacrifice some of the possible quality that might be gained with therapies for the value that will be realized when children are allowed to use their exploratory capacity to best advantage. That may be aided in one way or another and I have no problem with that any more than I have a problem with wearing glasses to enhance my vision or using an elevator when I could in fact walk up the stairs. And I use those examples because I think it's important for us to recognize how strict we have traditionally been with children needing to do things the right way when in fact many of us do things in many ways. I think there's more than one path to success and I would strongly encourage all of us to enable and support children to do things in whatever ways they can, because the more they do, the more they practice, the more they practice, the better they get at it. If they never do it beautifully, that's to me, not a big problem. If they're highly motivated and want to do it better, they'll work at it in the same way as kids who play the piano and like it will practice and the kids who don't like to play the piano, will only practice when their parents uh, insist. So if we think about the role that we have in working with children with impairments as 
primarily one of enhancing, promoting, encouraging development, then the focus is on what children can do, how best to enable them to do that, tolerating variations in how they do it, even if they don't do it beautifully, because in the long run, that is going to help them have a sense of competence, a sense, I can do this. And that development, I think, is a primary focus of what all of us should be focused, should be doing and focusing on with parents at all times. I'm happy to hear people's uh, uh, challenge to these ideas. I'm easy to find on the internet and uh, this would be a good topic for further discussion. Thanks for listening.